In the beginning, God created the universe and a planet called Earth. Humans were formed in God's image to continue God's work. But soon, humans decided we want to live our way, not God's. Selfishness and violence filled the world. So God started over with just one family. And God made a covenant with a man named Abraham. The land around you is now yours. Your family will be my blessing to the entire world. In just a few generations, they grew into a large nation named Israel. The Egyptians became fearful and forced the Israelites to be their slaves. Through a humble leader named Moses, God led the Israelites in a great exodus back toward their promised land. Along the journey, God gave laws and commands to help the Israelites follow God's ways. Finally, after 40 years of struggle and complaining in the desert, the Israelites arrived back home in the promised land. In victory, the people worshipped God, but soon after, they turned from God and lived their own rebellious ways. This became a pattern from generation to generation. Israel's greatest judge was Samuel. He followed God's ways and spoke for God as a prophet. He told Israel that God was the only king they ever needed. But they desired to be like the corrupt nations surrounding them and insisted, we want a human king who we can see to rule over us just like the other nations. So Samuel found a man named Saul to be Israel's first king. His reign began well, but before long, Saul stopped following God's ways and made many bad decisions. So Samuel told Saul, because you have turned your back on God, God has rejected you as a king. Samuel's search for the next king led to a courageous young shepherd boy named David. When David grew up to be king, God blessed him and the Israelites greatly. But David was not perfect. He had an affair with a married woman and committed a murder to cover it up. But deep inside, David always loved God and would return to living in God's ways. Known as the poet warrior, he wrote music to God called Psalms, heartfelt expressions of prayer, struggle, and thankfulness. After many years as king, David gave the throne to his son Solomon. God also told David, one day, one of your descendants will rule with a kingdom that will never end. Solomon succeeded his father David, becoming the richest king in Israel's history. Full of God's wisdom, Solomon wrote books like Proverbs and built a magnificent temple, a permanent tabernacle reminding people of God's continual presence. But Solomon strayed from God, marrying corrupt wives who led him into worshiping false gods. Civil war broke out, dividing the country into a northern kingdom called Israel and a southern kingdom called Judah. Soon, both of these kingdoms were led by corrupt kings who ignored God's ways. During this time, prophets were sent as messengers, calling the Israelites to return to God. They warned of the destructive consequences ahead. The prophet Elijah, a wild and rugged man, showed up false prophets by calling on God to give an awesome display of fire. The prophet Elisha followed him, bringing a boy back to life by causing him to sneeze. These prophets challenged the Israelites and their kings to return to God's better ways. But the Israelites would not listen. Distracted in their own rebellion, other nations swept in and conquered both of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. God's people were forced out of the promised land and many were taken away to be slaves once again. The temple was destroyed and the people lost everything. This was a time called the exile, where many of the Israelites, now called Jews, were scattered across different lands. One prophet named Daniel was sent to a city named Babylon. The law demanded that everyone pray only to the king of Babylon, but Daniel refused and prayed to God three times a day. So Daniel was thrown into a pit of hungry lions. But God closed the mouths of the lions and Daniel emerged the next morning without a scratch. Though scattered, God was still watching over the Jewish people, and God gave them hope, speaking through the prophet Jeremiah's words, I'll make a new covenant with the people of Israel, returning them to the promised land and filling their hearts and minds with my ways. Sixty years later, this hope was realized. The Persian Empire freed the Jewish people to return to their promised land. 
A small number gathered back in the capital city of Jerusalem, and a new smaller temple was built under the leadership of Ezra. Reunited, they celebrated and shouted with joy, but the elders wept in remembrance of what was lost. Prophets like Malachi and Isaiah pointed to the future and a coming king, a Messiah, one who would fully restore Israel and bring a new kingdom of peace. So the Jewish people waited and hoped, and God would not speak through the prophets again for 400 years.